Good morning, Highlands. This week we're going to be featuring videos about people who have made contributions in the areas of English language arts, math, science, history, the arts, STEM fields, and PE. We'll be naming these the awards that you'll be receiving at the awards assembly after these people. Here's our first videos. She is impossible to define. An author, a poet, a civil rights activist, an actress, Marguerite Johnson, was born in St. Louis, Missouri in 1928. When her parents divorced, she was sent with her brother to live with her grandmother in racially segregated Stamps, Arkansas. As a child, she formed a strong bond with her brother, who gave her the nickname Maya. She was taught by her grandmother to celebrate life to the fullest. She would need to keep her grandmother's positive messages handy when at age seven, she was molested by her mother's boyfriend. She only told her brother, but a few days later, the attacker turned up dead. Believing her words had killed the man. I stopped speaking for five and a half years. I simply refused to speak. I had voice, but I refused. When she spoke again, she and her brother joined her mother in San Francisco. She won a scholarship to study dance and drama. While she was in San Francisco, her progressive political views began to form. At the age of 16, after quitting high school briefly to become San Francisco's first African-American cable car operator, she returned to her studies. During her senior year, she became pregnant. She gave birth to her son, Guy, and supported him working as a waitress and a cook. Her career flourished, landing a role in the stage production of Porgy and Bess, and recording the album Calypso Lady in 1957. Although she had always penned lyrics and poetry, she finally began pursuing her writing more seriously. She moved to Harlem and joined the Harlem Writers Guild. She learned how to overcome the limitations and the challenges of her youth to achieve stardom as an artist and a writer. She served as the editor of the English language weekly, The Arab Observer, before moving to Ghana to work as editor for the Ghanaian Times. The assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. in 1968 left her devastated. But along with the great joys and painful lows she had experienced, her rich life served as the inspiration for her memoir, I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings. Published in 1970, covering the early years of her life, it was a critical and commercial triumph. In the following years, more books followed, including four more volumes of her autobiography. By the 1980s and 90s, uh, America as a whole, regardless of race, had a profound appreciation of her talents as an artist, as a poet, and writer. And so now she is widely seen as a national treasure. Famed author Frederick Douglass worked tirelessly as an abolitionist and an advocate for equal rights. You can't talk about the history of civil rights in this country without talking about Frederick Douglass long before Dr. King, the civil rights movement. Here's a man who was talking about basic dignity for people in this country. Born into slavery in Talbot County, Maryland around 1818, Frederick Douglass became educated first through his master's wife and eventually on his own. Douglas escaped slavery in 1838 by fleeing to New York and became a preacher the following year. Certainly, during Douglas's time, literacy for Africans was absolutely forbidden. In fact, it was very clear that once Africans could read and write, many wrote their own passes, which allowed them to move from place to place, and obviously this was disruptive to a very repressive system. After his anti-slavery lectures caught the attention of William Lloyd Garrison, the editor of the abolitionist paper, The Liberator, Douglas began touring the United States as a speaker with the American Anti-Slavery Society. Many whites refused to believe that Frederick Douglass had ever been a slave because he was so obviously intelligent, he was such a powerful speaker. In 1845, Douglass wrote and published his first autobiography entitled Narrative of the Life of Frederick Douglass. Although the book was a U.S. bestseller, Douglas was forced to live in Europe for two years to evade recapture. He ultimately purchased his freedom in 1847. 
People were shocked about Frederick Douglass, an ex-slave, writing his autobiography, and it was so poignant, and it was such a bird's eye view of what was going on on the plantation. He put it in very plain language, and it was just a powerful testimony of why slavery needed to end in our country. Douglass became the only African American to attend the first women's rights convention in 1848, and by 1861, Douglass was famous nationwide advising both President Lincoln and Johnson on the welfare of African Americans. By any measure, Frederick Douglass was a real American hero. He was a public intellectual, he was a statesman, he was an activist, and his life and his political commitment were dedicated to human rights, not just to civil rights or to the end of slavery. During his lifetime, Douglass was U.S. Ambassador to the Dominican Republic. And in 1872, he became the first African American to appear on a presidential ballot when he was nominated as vice president. Frederick Douglass died on February 20th, 1895 from natural causes. Good morning, Hans. My name is Anthony. And my name is Gaines. Today is Wednesday, February 19th. The word of the week is just meaning proposed as fitting. This week, our web leaders will be putting on the annual No One Eats Alone event. Activities will be held through the week, and on Thursday, the event will be held during grade lunches. This Friday will be our Highlands Award Assembly. In sports, it's time to start registering for spring sports. They will start in three weeks. Any 7th or 8th grade student, your parents can now start signing you up early for spring sports. These include track and field, baseball, and softball. If you have any questions before signing up, see Ms. Revis or Mr. Frenzen. Thanks for watching Scotty News. Gracias por ver Scotty News. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.